let's look at how does fusion middleware architecture look like it's a 3d architecture like anything and when you go to an enterprise companies will say hey can you tell us what architecture you have and most of them pretty much every place you will see and we'll look at high availability module which i think is eighth or ninth module we'll look at how the high availability architecture look like but it will still be three tier architecture on extreme right you have data tier in which you put your databases and ldap servers and you put that into one subnet and this is for data security and segregation and this is how as if you're an architect or wish to become an architect this is how you do this is what you will do is design the system and that's the first thing most of the time questions ask in interviews can you explain your architecture how does it look like so most of the time it will be a data tier middle tier and a web tier on extreme left and there's a one more tier which is client tier we don't usually i'm right now talking only fusion middleware architecture so you have one subnet which is a network of interrelated computers you might put database and possibly an ldap server where ldap stands for lightweight directory access protocol what is that why we need that we have a dedicated module called oracle internet directory we'll cover that but in layman's term you use you store your application users and groups and security or roles in that ldap system where database is used for your application data or metadata or might be configuration so this is a data tier this must be the most secure because the data is the most critical thing so that should be the most secure and that's why you it's on the extreme right the most safest place clear then on the middle tier you have the application tier and that's where you have applications deployed like weblogic server or application server like weblogic server so as wait web center access manager identity manager and so on and these applications run on app top of application server which is weblogic server and that's weblogic server will be module 2 because once we know the architecture every most of these applications run on top of weblogic so we'll look at weblogic because you should know as a fusion malware weblogic server good we are going to cover that in a dedicated module then Weblogic uses something called as OPSS and this will come again and again Oracle platform security service Which is nothing but a collection of services that your application tier or middle tier uses to talk to the database To talk to the security for authentication authorization role management database connection auditing archiving and all those things will be not archiving auditing all these things will be handled by oracle platform security services opss and that's a middle tier and this is where your application logic will go if you're working on soa developers will give you a soa composite which will have the soa logic or bpm guys business process management guys will give you the bpm processes and you deploy the soa composite or bpm compo components as a one single composite on the soa suite how do you de deploy how do you how does the file you get it all those things will cover in module maybe four or i don't remember module three or four about soa where we deploy the soa composites maybe five similarly web center portal guys might give you the web center portal content artifacts or the portal artifacts so you deploy those on web center portal the obie guys will give you the repository rpd in which the data is stored in rpd not in the database in the rpd the database will also be used for something else the data but the 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 reports rpd and catalog which is a, 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 a how does those reports are displayed or rendered cat, catalog and rpd how do you deploy that's part of oracle fusion malware and all these things will go into the middle tier then on top of middle tier or within middle tier you have the management tools like weblogic scripting tool weblogic console oracle enterprise manager console and we are going to look at one of the dedicated modules as consoles then on the extreme so you have a firewall between the database tier and the application tier and when you connect you say you drip, you pull a hole between the middle tier network and the database data tier network and you allow ports whatever is your database listener port or whatever is your ldap port you open or drill the hole or basically allow or or tell your firewall team to open the connections and that's you should know then what connections go or what ports to open 
Then on extreme left, you have a web tier where you deploy the web, web server like Oracle HTTP server. You might deploy a load balancer. And then the web server or Oracle HTTP server talks to this using managed beans or might be a module called mod WL OHS. We'll look at what is mod WL OHS or what is that managed module which connects from Oracle HTTP server to the application, the middle tier. So that's a web tier. So why you put web tier? Because when client connects, your application logic sits on the top or your application logic sits on the middle, middle tier. You don't want someone to have a direct hold to the, your application tier or middle tier because that's where the logic sits. You don't want anyone to get hold of your logic. If someone compromises, they, they only have connection to the web server. So they only compromise web server. They can't reach out. That's one reason for security point of view. You never allow or you try to minimize interaction. Never allow business logic to be accessible directly from the web tier, from the client tier or the browsers. So that you do it from browser. So you you put a proxy layer between the application tier or the middle tier and the client, which is end users. You put a proxy layer web tier. That's one reason. Other reason could be you want to protect a single sign on and I have a separate course Oracle access manager single sign on and that's where there is a component called web gate and you deploy that web gate on the web server so that applications can be easily integrated with Oracle access manager or any single sign on product. So that's another reason. So this is three tier another very 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 important topic and you, this is something you need to understand web tier middle tier or application tier and the database tier this is a single node i've told you we will go into high availability a little bit later so let's move on now this is a high level 3 tier architecture same thing what you do is a database layer with something called as rack a real application cluster and if you're not a dba uh, you don't have to learn this but it's always another good thing to know at least have a familiarity what you have is you have two machines on which database is running actual data for the database is going to into the single repository or single place but you have two machines where database is running in active active and both talk to the same repository and, and there's a concept called real application cluster so you put that in at the database tier level there's something called as t log and jms transaction logs and java messaging server jms we'll look into these into the soa soa concept by default, this T logs and JMS can be on a file based repository, which is on the application tier, or they can be in a database inside the database. So for high availability, you decide whether you want to put them into cluster file system or you want to put them into database. You again, we'll look at into the database tier. So this is what oh, sorry, we are going to look at into SOA module. So you put them into database for high availability, or you can put a cluster file system and put these T logs and JMS onto that cluster file system. Then on the application tier, what you do is you have two machines. So a host one, so a host two. So is just an example. It can be for any other thing. So you install so sorry, two machines. You install something called as WebLogic, which is on which so runs. So you install it on both the machines and you create something called as cluster. We're going to look all these concepts later. You uh, so you create a cluster and the servers on this cluster will talk to each other using a clustering methodology and there are two different type of methodology clustering methodology we have a dedicated module about clustering high availability i'm going to cover that there and that's where you put this uh, that's how these two machines talk to each other or remains in cluster then similarly you put a web server two web servers for highly active active and then on top of that a load balancer and your users come to the load balancer load balancer will say oh, whether to forward it to web logic host sorry web server one or web server two and that web server one will there'll be a as i said earlier mod wl ohs module in oracle http server that 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 also supports active active web logic so that will dictate depending on the logic written by oracle whether to forward it to soa host one or forward it to soa host two and that mod wl has a clustering facility so when we come to the module there is a dedicated module about mod wl ohs we're going to look at in that time then 
so this is about soa host uh, again we'll go into deep dive in later so you have a web tier oracle http server or otd active active cluster application tiers web logic soa obi again in active active your data tier oid oud or databases again in active active so oracle support this and that's where that's what lot of companies implement pretty much every company implement oracle has a methodology called enterprise deployment architecture and we are going to cover that enterprise deployment architecture in its dedicated module module about i think 10th or 11th module of oracle fusion so head into the next lesson